today we are going to learn new topic morality in Bali we call it sila right so as you all know that we are learning uh, three topics in soda study class uh, dana sila and bhavana so we have learned uh, the first topic about dana uh, Second topic is the sila, right? Morality. So we are going to learn new topic, morality. So now these are the things to discuss in the class. Um, so the first one is a, what is sila? So the definition of sila, right? Definition of sila. And second one is a, we have a different type of sila. Then third one, uh, detailed explanation about sila. So all the sila will be explained in detail uh, using the different sodas, right? Using the relevant sodas. Then different level of sila. As you all, do, all know that we have a different level uh, depending on the people, uh, there will be different level of sila. So sila or morality or a labor sin and morality, morality or a mank may be different, right? The different level of sila. <coughs> uh, most important thing is the benefit of sila, right? Uh, so, so what are the benefits of sila, right? So these are the topics that we are going to cover uh, regarding with this topic. So as, as usual, so if you have a question during the lessons, feel free, right, to ask a question. As I think it's uh, important to clarify our doubt, so while we are studying, So we are learning graduate training. I think that is very important. So in Winia Pirika, Chulawaka Pali, we have a, uh, the Buddha talk about eight wonders of great ocean and using the simile of eight wonders of great ocean. And the Buddha talk about eight wonders of Dhamma Winia or eight wonders of Bodhisattva, or eight wonders of Bodhisattva, right? When we, l when we talk about dana, uh, we talk about uh, one, uh, one wonders of Bodhisattva. So when we talk about um, great ocean, the great ocean has only one taste. So the taste of salt, right? The water is salty. So just like that, in Buddhism, there's only one taste. Or, uh, that is the liberation, right? The taste of liberation. So there's only one taste. Uh, the taste of liberation uh, uh, attained by the Buddha, and the taste of liberation attained by you, there's no difference. Regarding with the taste of liberation is concerned, it is the same, right? It is the same. So this is a, the wonder of Buddhism. As you all know that in other religions, most of the religions, so what you achieve is not, not the same with the God or founder of their, that religion, right? In Buddhism, so if you practice the Nobel for part, and you will achieve the liberation of the mind or the bliss of Nibbana and the Buddha also went the same path, right? Uh, the Buddha have the taste of uh, the bliss of Nibbana, the taste of liberation so when you attain Nibbana, when you become arahant the taste of Nibbana, the bliss of Nibbana and the bliss uh, uh, the taste of liberation may, be, may not be different. 
it is the same, right? It is the same. This is the one of the wonders of uh, Bodhisattva or one of the wonders of Bodhisattva. Here is another one. So this is the first part of the wonder of Bodhisattva. And the Buddha said that monks, even monks, as a great wonder, deepens gradually, slope gradually, and shape gradually with the no abruptness like a fresh piece. As you all know that the great ocean deepens gradually, right? Deepens gradually. So just like that, the Buddha said that the Dharma and Vinaya, the here. The Dharma and Vinaya meet Buddha Sasana, right? So here, when we talk about the Dharma, the teaching taught by the Buddha, right? All the teaching taught by the Buddha, it is called the Dharma. But Vinaya, Vinaya meet the rules and regulations laid down by the Buddha, not only for the monks and nuns, but also for lay devotees, right? Lay devotees. Actually, in the Vinaya, uh, uh, in the Pali Canon, just like a five precepts, right? So five precepts is a, uh, the rule for lay devotee. And also in Singhala Vada Soda, so the Buddha talk about the duties of a husband, a duties of a wife, and duties of a parent, etc., right? So these are the rules and regulations, right? We call it Vinaya. So the Dharma and discipline. But in in Bodhisattva, in Bodhisattva, so there is a graduate training, right? There is a graduate training, a graduate doing, a graduate course. So with the no abruptness, such as penetration of profound knowledge. Here, penetration of profound knowledge means becoming arahant or attaining enlightenment as the arahant. So here, um, some people may think that Buddhism uh, talk about Nibbana, 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 right? It's not like this, it's not like this. Buddhism go graduate path, right? Starting, uh, when we talk about Dana Sila Bhavana, the Dana is the first, the first path, right? The first one. So when we talk about Sila Samari Panya, a sila is the first part. It goes gradually, right? It deepens gradually. So great ocean deepens gradually, just like that. So there is a graduate training in Buddhism. So you don't need to afraid, right? Some people may afraid when you talk about uh, the noble four path or four noble truth, right? <laughs> you may afraid, right? No need to be afraid. We have a graduate path and graduate Fridays. Depends on your knowledge and depends on your maturity, then uh, you can follow, right? Starting from Sila or starting from Dharma. So I if you cannot practice Sila, try with the Dharma, right? So therefore, Dharma, Sila, Bhavana are graduate training in Buddhism. So for those who cannot practice Sila and Bhavana, you can start with the Dhana, right? That is a graduate training. Pali Canon very often mentioned that uh, the Buddha used a method he called graduate discourse. So when he talk about the Dharma, so graduate discourse, starting from lower level, the median level, and higher level, right? It is called graduate discourse, a new Bhagavata. So the Buddha used this method in many occasions. So when the Buddha met uh, uh, King Bhimisara, the Buddha used this method. So when the Buddha met uh, Anatta Bhindika, the donor of Jidavana monasteries, the Buddha used this method, right? So very often the Buddha used this method. So graduate discourse. So what is the graduate discourse? The first one is the Dana Kata. 
the discourse that is connected with the giving or generosity, right? So this is the first one. This is the, uh, in Buddhist teaching, it is a, the lowest path, I will say that, right? So therefore, if you cannot practice sila and samatha, or sila and bhavana, and you can start with the dana, right? So this is the, uh, so therefore, some people may not be uh, able to practice sila and bhavana, the Buddha may taught this one, dana, right? Dana kata. So by looking at this one, we can understand that uh, the dana is the lower level of practice. <laughs> now, second one is the sila kata, the discourse that are connected with the morality of virtue, right? So actually, the sila is translated in many ways. Some people translate the virtue or morality or moral conduct. Some may translate as the ethic, right? So differently they were translate. Today we are going. Uh, today we will clarify the meaning of sila, right? What is sila? So, so we have finished uh, about dana, right? So the first part of graduate discourse. The second one is the sila, morality. So. The Buddha may talk about sila after dana. Then after that, because of dana and sila, they will go to heaven, right? They will go to heavenly realms. And people, the listener became very, uh, very happy to hear that, right? If you give dana, if you keep precept, you will go to heaven, right? So that is called sakakata heavenly walls or good destination. So as you all know that we have a, um, uh, we have a different uh, human realm. Here good destination be human realm and also the six heavenly realms, right? So these are called Sakakata. If we do Dana and Sila, we will go to heavenly, heavenly realms, right? Without Sila, you cannot go to heavenly realm. That's very important, right? That's very important. So that, that is a gradual discourse. Then after that, for those who have a mature understanding or mature perfection or parami, the Buddha will talk about showing the danger and degradation and corruption of sensual pleasure, right? Sensual pleasure. So as you all know that, if somebody have a rebirth in heavenly realms, and he can enjoy sensual pleasure, right? He or she can enjoy sensual pleasure. Then after talking about Dana and Sila, the Buddha talk about heavenly realms. So enjoy more sensual pleasure in your delight, right? In your delight that for those who have a mature knowledge and also mature perfection, the Buddha will talk about the fourth type of graduate discourse, that is showing the danger of sensual pleasure, right? So it is dangerous to enjoy sensual pleasures. For normal people, you may not be able to understand, right? Then uh, enjoyment of sensual pleasure has a danger, right? Danger. This is only for those who have a higher uh, understanding and higher perfection, right? The danger of sensual pleasure. That is the, the fourth one. And also, the Buddha will talk about the profit and benefit of renunciation. Here, renunciation means trying to renounce sensual pleasure, right? Sensual pleasure. So I think it is important to understand this is a graduate discourse, right? A graduate discourse. So some people who who are uh, uh, who and how do they who see uh, number four and number five, right? They may say that Buddhism is pessimistic religion, right? Pessimistic religion. It is not like this. It's not like this. 
um, as you know, you can look at uh, the life of a man, right? The life of a man who is living in the forest, not in the living in big city, right? If you like, look at the man who is living in the forest, they don't have luxury, they don't have anything. What they have is uh, the rope and the bow and there is small hat, small hat, right? They don't have anything regarding with the luxury. They cannot enjoy sensual pleasure. But they seem to be very happy, right? They are very happy. They don't have any suffering in their mind. The reason is they know the danger of sensual pleasure and they have the benefit of renouncing all these ones, right? So as a Buddhist man, if you can renounce everything, is happiness, right? Happiness. So we have a lot of, uh, so actually this is another, another level, right? Another level, not for lay devotees, not for lay devotees. So even among the lay devotees, for those who want to renounce sensual pleasure, they can practice, right? This is another level, another level. And the Buddha will talk about the benefit of renouncing sensual pleasure, right? Then for those, uh, the Bali can give a simile or a white cloth, right? A white cloth. So somebody who have a mature knowledge and understanding, and his mind is pure, getting pure, and his mind is ready to receive a higher teaching of the Buddha. So uh, a white cloth is easy to tie with a different color, right? Different color. Just like that, when the Buddha know the listener mind is a pure, without any hindrances in his mind, and if uh, his or her mind is ready, the Buddha will talk about the noble evil path. Sorry, the four noble truth. The four noble truth is highest, highest discourse, the highest teachings of the Buddha. Actually, in Pali, it is called Bhutana Samokansika Desana, the special summon of the Buddha. That is so special, you cannot find in any, any other religion. You cannot find in any other religion. I will say that this is a special summon of the Buddha. So in other religions, if you say suffering, suffering, and problem and problem, he will say pessimistic, right? Actually, as a Buddhist, we are not afraid to tell the problem. We are not afraid to talk about suffering, right? So we are not, talk we are not just talking about suffering, and we also talk about uh, the stopping of suffering, how to stop, right? A cessation of suffering, how to stop it? The opposite of suffering is happiness, right? Happiness. So uh, we have, number one, suffering. And we talk about the cause of suffering and the cessation of suffering and the path that lead to cessation of suffering. Actually, we are not afraid to talk about suffering or the problem. And by, to by talking about our problem, and we can find out the cause, right? The origin of our problem. Why we are suffering. Why we have a problem, right? We are not afraid. Then we also have the path or the practice to end our suffering. In other words, we have the path or the practices that we can take happiness, right? Happiness. So that is called the special summon of the Buddha, special usage. Actually, you can use, uh, it's the literal translation of Bodhana Samokansika Dedana. The discourse that is different from other people, right? Samokansika Dedana. So here, this is a gradual discourse, a gradual discourse. So the Buddha will talk about starting from Dana, then after that Sila, then after that, uh, about 
uh, about heavenly realms, right? Heavenly realms. So these are for normal people, right? If you want to enjoy sensual pleasure, you can do dana. You can you can you can keep precept, right? And you can enjoy sensual pleasure in your delight, right? For those who want to get liberation of the mind, who want to attain nibbana, then you can follow four, five, six, right? Then you try to understand the danger of sensual pleasure and trying to understand the benefit of renouncing sensual pleasure, right? Then after that, trying to practice the noble full path, right? Trying to understand the four noble truths, then trying to practice the noble full path. Then you will take cessation of suffering, the bliss of Nibbana, right? So this is a, a gradual discourse of the Buddha. So Pali Canon, when you read the Pali Canon, you will see those graduate discourse, right? Graduate discourse. So therefore, Dana, Sila, Bhavana are graduate discourse. So if you are able, trying to keep precept, then try to meditate, right? Try to meditate. This is a graduate discourse. Here, morality, concentration, and wisdom are also the graduate discourse. So as you all know that, we have learned dana sila bhavana, a different method, right? Different method. So when we talk about sila and bhavana, sila and bhavana, so it can be divided into three. Morality, so bhavana can be divided into two. Samadhi and Panya, right? Samadhi and Panya. Concentration and wisdom. So this is also a graduate discourse. For those who cannot meditate, so you can keep precept, right? You can keep precept. For those who cannot uh, practice inside meditation, you can calm your mind. You can try to concentrate your mind, right? That is concentration. And for those who have a mature knowledge, those who can do that, you can practice inside meditation, right? Inside meditation. So that is called the graduate discourse. So these are Sila Samari Panya. Sila Samari Panya are called threefold training. Threefold training. So in many sodas, the Buddha talk about these uh, three four trainings. So showing that this is the path to purity, uh, the path to liberation, the path to nibbana, right? The path to nibbana. <coughs> so here we have a three four training. If you train, so three type of these training, then you will attain nibbana, right? So starting from sila samadhi panya. Number one, higher training in morality. A Sila Seika. Actually, in, uh, it is about morality, right? It is about morality. A Sila Seika. So, higher training in morality. Trying to train your mind to have a Sila or to have a good contact, right? So, that is called higher training in morality. And second one, higher training of the mind. Then after training your bodily and body contact, after training your body, but after training your, your speeches, then you can train your mind, right? Train, training your mind is not really easy. So we always say that, monkey mind, right? Monkey mind. So our mind is very quick. So when you are sitting in the classroom, it might go to many places, right? Going here and there, just like a monkey mind. It's not really easy to train our mind. So therefore, training the mind is more difficult than training our body, than our speech, right? Our speech. So therefore, uh, concentration or samadhi is higher than sila, morality. 
some time, you can train your mind, but it's not easy to practice insight. In other words, it's not easy to see what is happening in your mind, what is happening in your body, right? So that, that is called higher training in insight, or higher training in wisdom, right? In wisdom. Even though your mind is calm and concentrated, if you do not know the nature of your mind, it's not called wisdom. It's not called wisdom. It is just called concentration of the mind or tranquility of the mind. Right? Only you know what is happening, how your mind is working, right? How your body is uh, functioning. So then only you will have an insight or wisdom, right? But here, wisdom means not normal wisdom. The knowledge of how your mind arises and how your mind passes away, right? The knowledge of impermanent nature of your body and mind. So that is called wisdom or panya, right? So therefore, uh, this is a great, uh, these are the greater training, right? So you can practice uh, to keep it set. But if you are able, you can try your mind to calm down, right? To concentrate it. So if you are able, try to observe the nature of your mind, impermanent nature of your mind, right? So that is called wisdom or panya. So sila samari panya are a graduate discourse. A graduate discourse, right? It go like this. Just like a great ocean deep in gradually, right? So just like that in Buddhism, you can start with the sila. Then after that, if you are able, try to concentrate your mind, right? Try to train, train your mind to get concentration. And if you are able, then try to practice inside meditation. Actually, to know inside, to practice inside meditation, you need a certain level of tranquility of your mind. Otherwise, you cannot practice inside, right? So therefore, uh, sila, samadhi, panya are a graduate discourse, a graduate training, right? Any question after now? Okay, let's go. Uh, we will be learning about sila uh, today, and later we will talk about concentration on samadhi, then we will talk about wisdom or insight, right? So it is a graduate discourse. We will go one by one. Sila is highlighted as the foundation of concentration and wisdom. So actually here, without sila, you cannot get concentration and wisdom. So therefore, sila is very important. Sila is very important to uh, uh, for the foundation of concentration. If you do not have a sila, your mind is not concentrated. Your mind will not be tranquilized, right? Tranquilized. That's very important. So therefore, sila is highlighted as the foundation of samadhi and panya in many sodas, especially in Sauda Nikaya. In Jatta Soda, uh, Sauda Nikaya, chapter 1, Soda number 20, 23. So the Buddha answered the question of a devas. So the deva asked that we have a lot of craving, right? We have a lot of craving. How to eradicate those cravings? Those are desire, right? Desire. And the Buddha, uh, actually, uh, the deity or deva, as a uh, how to escape from internet and external. The Buddha talk about 
uh, a very famous stanza, Sile Patetaya Nero Sapanyo, after having to conceal that me trying to have a sila first, right? Trying to have a sila first. Then a wise man developed samadhi and panya. Based on sila, you're trying to develop your concentration and trying to develop your, cons uh, your insight or wisdom, right? Insight or wisdom. A bhikkhu who is ardent and sagacious can disentangle this tank. I think it's very difficult to understand, right? So as you all know that we have a uh, different type of craving in our mind, right? How to remove all those type of craving? And the Buddha said that trying to establish sila, morality first. Uh, based on the sila, your mind will be tranquilized you will have a peace of mind. Then if you have a peace of mind, if you have a tranquility of the mind, then you will see the truth. The, the true nature of your mind and your body, right? If you understand the true nature of your body, that is impermanent nature of the mind and the body, the impermanent nature of the mind and body, and suffering and nonsense, nature of your mind and body, and you can overcome all type of craving. So if you do not understand right now, uh, don't worry. And we will study what is impermanence, right? Why, why is suffering, right? So what is nonsense? So we will study one by one, because it is a graduate training, right? So for the time being, we will focus on sila. Here, I want to highlight that uh, sila is very important. Sila is uh, the foundation of samadhi and panya, right? Without sila, you cannot establish concentration insight. For that reason, so when we go to meditation retreat, you have to keep yourself fast, right? During your, your retreat, you have to keep precept because the precept is very important, right? As a Buddhist man, we have to try to uh, practice uh, rules and regulations uh, exactly, right? Because it's very important. Sila is very important. Through Sila, uh, we can develop higher level of concentration, some uh, uh, insight, right? Or wisdom. Actually, I take out this one this, because it's very important. We saw the mega was written based on this bus. We saw the mega was written based on this bus. So as you all know that uh, we saw the mega was a, uh, written by Venerable Borogosa, right? Venerable Buddha Kosa, he is from southern India, southern India. And as you all know that uh, up to 12th century AD, uh, southern India is a, uh, a Buddhist country, Buddhist country. Um, so in those times, uh, so there are uh, learning, uh, Buddhist learning centers, right? Uh, Venerable Buddha Gosa, teacher of Venerable Buddha Gosa, he, te he taught to his pupil, go and study the commentaries written in Sinhala in Sri Lanka. So as you all know that, um, uh, when uh, Venerable Mahinda, the son of King Asoka, went to Sri Lanka for propagation of sasana, uh, he bring uh, the commentary together with the Pali Khan, right? So those commentary were uh, translated into local language. It's called Sinhala. So oh, those commentary were uh, learned uh, through the ages, right? From one generation to uh, another. So at the time of 5th century AD, 
at the time more venerable protocols are. So there are a few commentaries in India. So therefore, they need to get more commentaries. So most of the commentaries we are maintained in Sri Lanka. So therefore, uh, his teacher told Venerable uh, Bodhagosa to go and translate uh, Sinhala commentary into Pali. Then he went to Sri Lanka. Before he go to Sri Lanka, of course he had to learn Sinhala. So when he expired in Sinhala, then he taught to a senior man in the Mahavihara. So Mahavira is a, a famous learning center in Sri Lanka. So he taught to senior men that he went to translate uh, Sinhala commentary into Pali. But uh, the senior men at the time do not believe his ability. So they, they need to text whether the Nidwaya Buddha Kosa has the, the ability to, to translate uh, Sinhala commentary into Pali. For that reason, they gave this bus, this gata, from Sounder Nikaya, Sounder Nikaya, and told, told him, hey, you write a book based on this soda. So therefore, whenever Bodhagosa have to write a book using this bus, a particular bus, it became Wisodi Maga. So Wisodi Maga means the path of purity, right? Actually, uh, Wisodi Maga was written based on this bus, right? So therefore, so this one is very, very important, very important to understand. So Wisodi Maga is the most authoritative Tidavada text apart from Bali Canon, right? So as you, as you all know that Bali Canon is the main text for Tedavara. But apart from Bali Canon, Wisodi Mega is the most influential and the most important text for us. Right? The most important for us. Because in Wisodi Mega, we can find the definition of Sila and all the things about Sila. And the definition of samadhi and all the things about samadhi. And it explains about panya or wisdom as well. So all the uh, sila, samadhi, panya, so these are called the threefold training, right? So these things are mentioned in Wisodi Maga in details together with reference, right? Actually, Venerable uh, Bodhagosa write with Sodi Mega using the sodas from the Bali Canon. Actually, he is not writing, uh, explaining about Sila Samari Panya blindly. He used a lot of, lot of sodas, a lot of citations to explain about Sila Samari Panya. So, therefore, it's very important, right? It's very important to understand about uh, Wizardi Mega. Some people criticize Wizardi Mega that some of the contents in the Wizardi Mega are wrong. So I think it's too natural. There may be wrong interpretations or wrong definitions of Wizardi Mega because Venerable Bodhagos are also a human being, right? He may not, everything may not be correct, right? So therefore, some scholars, what they call a scholar, right? They, uh, they're trying to, how do you say, uh, pinpoint. Uh, they're trying to, I, I would say that, um, uh, belittle, belittle the importance of uh, Usuri Mag, right? So actually, uh, it is too, it's natural that uh, there may be some wrong interpretation or a wrong information with the matter. Because the author is a human being, right? Human beings. So anyway, so this is the, the most important text apart from Bali Khan, right? 
So it is, uh, we thought it might is used as a, a manual of, manual of meditation, right? So when we are talking about meditation, we have to use Visori Maga. So as you all know that uh, meditation masters, uh, they have to, uh, they have to study Visori Maga. Uh, so through Visori Maga, so they practice meditation, right? So therefore, Visori Maga is important because we use it as a, a meditation manual. And also, when we want to learn about Dana Sila Bhavana, uh, you can uh, go and study with the Maga, right? With the Maga. It's very important for us. It makes a detailed explanation about Sila, Samari, and Panya, right? Morality, concentration, and wisdom. So when we want to learn Morality, I think it's good to use with the Mega as well, right? With the Mega as well. So, therefore, but regarding with the Sila, I will be using with the Mega because we can find the reference in the Pali Canon easily, right? Instead of going to with the Mega, we will go to the Soda directly, right? But when we talk about meditation, it's not really easy to find meditation method in the Pali Canon. So therefore, we have to use Visori Maga as a meditation manual. Even though, the, uh, even though we can get uh, meditation method in Pali Canon, it's not mentioned in detail, right? It's mentioned briefly. So therefore, it is important to use Visori Maga, right? So it is depends on individuals. Uh, some people can use different methods, right? Different methods of meditation. So therefore, uh, if we combine, I think Visori uh, Mega is very important. It talk about Sila uh, Samari Panya, which is the path to Nepal, right? So if you want to attain Nepana, then you can uh, you can study with Sodi Maga, right? And you can pra you can practice. Uh, you can follow with Sodi Maga method, especially for those who are meditating, right? And you can re you can read with Sodi Maga. A few years ago, maybe I think four four, four or five years ago, uh, one of the gentlemen came and visit our temple. So at the time, I was sitting downstairs, studying. Then that gentleman asked me that uh, in other religions, in, Christi in Christianity, they have a Bible, only one book. In Muslim, they have a Quran, only one book. In Buddhism, is there any book that cover all the teachings of the Buddha? <laughs> I have to think about it. <laughs> As you all know that we have a very big book, right? So in the Pali Canon, we have a 40, 40 books. In Pali Canon is said. Pali Canon is said. But I have to think, only one book that covers all the teachings of the Buddha. Then after that, we saw it in <laughs> I told him, we have a one book, Wizard in Maga, right? Wizard in Maga. Even the Wizard in Maga, uh, all the things about Dana not mentioned, right? It is only Sila, Samadhi, and Panya because this is the path of Maga to purity, right? The purity of purification. Wizard in Maga was translated into English by a Burmese scholar called Upe, Upe Mountain. Actually, he is a Christian. And he translated Wizard Maga and also the commentary of the first Abhidhamma book into English as a, a, his, a, a PhD degree. So 
so he was translated, uh, Wizard Mega was translated by him. Then after 20 years later, Venerable uh, Yana Mali, he translated uh, Wizard Mega again. It is called the path of purification, right? The Bami scholar used the word the path of purity, right? The path of purity. According to all the Venerable Buddha Gonsa, we saw the me purity, we saw the me nibbana, we saw the me nibbana, make me the path to nibbana. So that means if you want to attain nibbana, you have to practice sila samadhi panya, right? Sila samadhi panya are the path to attain nibbana. I think you can understand the contents of Vithori Mega easily, right? The contents, is, it, is, it is about Sila Samari Pan, right? Sila Samari Pan. Any question? Okay. Oh, quick question. What's it? between uh, Visuddhi Marga and Vimuti Marga. There's also another text, right? Is this okay. all meditation or so? Vimuti Marga. Okay. Yeah, can you tell us what's the difference or similarity? Vimuti Marga uh, was written by Upasena, uh, who is uh, living uh, almost the same age. Uh, actually, uh, Vimoti Mega is a, a very similar to Visodi Mega. I think I have to elaborate a little bit. Uh, in Sri Lanka, we have a two, uh, I think, uh, two schools, I would say that, right? One is a um, uh, Mahavihara. Mahavihara. Actually, uh, the mains in Mahavihara they strictly follow uh, the teachings of the errands. Actually, they are orthodox, we call it orthodox bodhis or Theravada bodhis, uh, bodhis mains. But in Abhyagiri, there's another school in Sri Lanka. They are also Theravada, but they are more, how do you say, open minded or they open any teachings. Not only they learn not only Tiravara, but also uh, the teachings of other schools as well, right? So therefore, they are just like a, if we compare with the Christianity, uh, Tiravaras are just like a uh, Catholic, right? Uh, the monks who are living in Abhyagiri, they are just like a Protestant. So they have a revolutionary idea. So wherever came to their country, they were steady, and they, they were trying to steady it. So we Modi Maga, uh, the path to liberation. Here, we Modi me liberation, right? The same is the same. Uh, we Sodi also talk about Nibbana. We Modi also Nibbana. So we Modi Maga me, the path to liberation, right? So one of the men who is living in Abhyagiri school, uh, he write a book, it's called Vimodi Maga. So nowadays, uh, uh, the copy of Vimodi uh, Maga is lost. But it is translated into Chinese. So therefore, we have only uh, the copy of Chinese version. So I think two scholar men from Sri Lanka, so they translated uh, from Pali, sorry, uh, they translated uh, Chinese with Vimodi Mega to uh, in Pali. So what we now have is a Chinese version of Vimodi Mega, and also the Bali, Bali version was uh, translated in later, uh, in recent time, recent, recent period. Some scholars said that um, Wisodi Mega is a, 
uh, how to say that uh, copy from Wimodi Mag. Some scholars said that in terms of uh, how to say dividing the chapters and in terms of the contents inside, right? It is a Wimodi Mag is very similar to Wimodi Mag. To be honest, I don't know much about, I don't know the contents of Wimodi Maga. So what I have read is the, the writing of the scholar, right? Writing of the scholars. So anyway, whoever write the path to liberation or the path to purity, it is about the practice that lead to Nibbana. It will be the same, right? If uh, Tibetan monks who are writing uh, the path to Nibbana, and also I also write the path to Nibbana, then I may give a different name, but the contents will be the same. There may be different interpretation or different approach or different usage, but the contents will be the same. That is nothing but sila, samari, panya, right? Other than that, you cannot avoid these three training, right? So if you want to attain a bana, sila, samari, and panya, right? So therefore, we saw the mega and we modi mega, there may be different names, but the contents may be the same, right? Okay. So that means it's a uh, loss in translate uh, somewhere. That's why people seldom talk about Vimoti Maga. This is because it's that what you say you mentioned is a uh, translated in Chinese only. Okay. Thanks. Maybe because of that, uh, as you all know that nowadays, uh, if we talk about the history, uh, Apia Giri school is very influential during uh, the first century to. 9 or 10th century. During that time, Apiagiri is very influential and very powerful. The uh, uh, Mahavira or Tiravara, those, those men who maintain Tiravara, right, exactly, they are weak in those times. But from 11 to 12th century onward, so Mahavira became very powerful, even today, right? Even uh, up to right now. For that reason, uh, it is natural that uh, the book written by the man called Abhyagiri may not be popular, right? Because of that reason, I think uh, the copy is lost. So uh, apart from that, uh, we saw the Maga was used by Tedavara, all the Tedavara countries, so therefore it became popular. Right? Popular. Maybe uh, the content may be the same, right? Content may be the same. We saw the, it's about Nibbana. We Modi, also Nibbana, right? Uh, different usage. The same meaning, right? The same meaning. Mega is the path. So when you want to attain a bana, you have to practice Silas Maripan, right? Silas Maripan. Any question? Okay, let's go. Now I'll talk about the Nobel Eiffel path, right? The Nobel Eiffel path is the path that leads to Nibbana. As you all know that the Nobel Eiffel path starting from right view, right? Right view, right thought, right? So we have eight divisions. So these eight divisions of the path, the Nobel Eiffel path, are usually classified into three subcategories. That is Morality, concentration, and wisdom. So, if we categorize uh, uh, the Nobel Eiffel path, we can summarize in this way: morality, concentration, and wisdom. Right. So, in according with uh, 
Chula Vedan La Soda, Majamani Gaya, Soda number 44. So if you read Chula, Vaga, uh, Chula Vedan La Soda, so you will know this method, right? Morality, concentration, and wisdom. How to divide? Right view and right thought is wisdom, right? Is wisdom. Apanya, right speech, right action, right livelihood. So these are sila or morality. So when we are talking about sila, if we follow uh, the Nova Eightfold Path, the way the Nova Eightfold Path is playing, so we have to start with the right speech, right action, and right livelihood. Right? So I think it is important to note here that uh, in Chula Vedana Soda, Bhikkhuni uh, Dhamma Dana, the Bhikkhuni Dhamma Dana explained her former husband. Uh, so which is a wider, uh, whether it is a Nobel for Park or three for training, which one is a wider? So the how for my husband as whether we can add the Nova Eightfold Path into uh, Sila Samari Panya or uh, we can add Sila Samari Panya and Nova Eightfold Path. Bhikkhuni Dhammarina said that Sila Samari Panya a wider range. You can add the Nova Eightfold Path into so that means the Nobel Eightfold Path is just a part of Sila Samari Panya. Right? That means Sila Samari Panya are wider, a bigger range, right? Bigger range. The Nobel Eightfold Path is included in the threefold training, right? Threefold training. You got it? Later we will learn in detail because the, the Nobel A4 part is under meditation. So I will, I will explain in detail So when we talk about meditation, right? It is important to know about the Nobel A4 part. Then uh, right view, right thought, wisdom, the right speech, right action, right livelihood, sila. Here, Starting from wisdom, right? Starting from wisdom, not starting from sila. But here it's important to know that we have to start from the right view. So when we talk about the noble for path, some people they rearrange the sequence of the noble for path, starting from right speech, right action, right livelihood then concentration, then uh, wisdom, right? They want to rearrange in this way. It is totally, totally wrong, because in the uh, uh, Magha Sanyoda, the first Soda of Magha Sanyoda clearly said that everything, a good thing, a wholesome thing, starting with the right view. If you do not have a right view, you don't have a sila. If you do not have a right view, you don't have a concentration. So therefore, so when we talk about the Nobel Eightfold Path, we have to start with the right view. You cannot rearrange, right? So if you rearrange the Nobel Eightfold Path, that means you are trying and going against teachings of the Buddha, right? Teachings of the Buddha, it's very important. Then after that, um, right effect, right mindfulness, right concentration. That is a concentration, right? Concentration. So this is a, the Nova Eightfold Path, the Nova Eightfold Path. So if you have a, a Nova Eightfold Path, but after completion of the Nova Eightfold Path, then you have right knowledge. Right knowledge, Samanyana. Right knowledge is nothing but 
wisdom, another wisdom, right? Another wisdom. Then only you have a right knowledge and you will have a right liberation. Sama Vimodi. So this is a uh, right knowledge, uh, right knowledge, Samanyana, it is, uh, it is a type of wisdom, right? Wisdom. Now only you have a right wisdom and you will have a right liberation. Liberation of the mind, right? So uh, that is the very full part. So here, what I want to point, point out is uh, we can summarize uh, the Nobel Four Part into uh, three categories: sila, samari, anya. So when we talk about the Nobel Four Part, start with the right uh, wisdom, right? Wisdom, right view, and right out. Then only uh, uh, how to say the sila, right speech right action and right livelihood and only after that you have a right concentration right so when we when we look at the Nobel for part you can understand that uh, based on sila then you can have a right and uh, right concentration based on concentration you will have a wisdom or right knowledge right only you have a right knowledge then you have a right liberation. Liberation from negative mental state, right? Liberation from negative mental state. So Judy, later I will explain in detail. For the time being, uh, so the Nobel for part can be uh, categorized into three categories, right? Silas Mari Panya, right? Silas Mari Panya. The Nobel A4 part is very important for, for the Buddhist, right? Very important for the Buddhist. So therefore, I want to talk about uh, about the Mr. Rick David. As you all know that, uh, we have learned about Mr. Rick David uh, when, when I introduce, uh, when I introduce uh, Nika or Pali Kana, right? Pali Kana. He, uh, he was a British Bali scholar and also founder of Bali the Society. He tried to promote teachings of the Bora, especially uh, Bali Canon, right? Uh, teachings of Tedavara in the West. So therefore it's very important. I think that you still remember the story of his life. He was the son of a Christian priest and Christian Sunday school teacher. So uh, his parents want him to become a Christian priest. So therefore, they educate. They let him read a lot of books. And the books about other religions as well. Uh, he had to read, uh, uh, how do you say, the, the books about Buddhism, right? So after reading uh, Buddhist books, he became interested in Buddhism. So therefore, he chose to go to Sri Lanka. He studied Pali, and he studied uh, Buddhism in Sri Lanka, and he came back to England, and he founded Pali the Society. And he is a professor in some universities, teaching uh, Buddhism, right? Not only Buddhism, but also a comparative study of other religion as well, right? So here, I want to talk about uh, what he said. It's very important. About, uh, it's about the Nobel Four Part, and he said that Buddhists or no Buddhists. Actually, I'm copy from uh, the Buddha and his teaching, right? Actually, I'm copy everything. Buddhists or no Buddhists, I have examined every one of the great religious systems of the world. As you know, he came from Christian background, and he also studied other religions as well. Buddhists or no Buddhists. And he, uh, he have examined 
that be one of the great religious system of the world and in none of those religion have I found anything to surpass the noble evil path in terms of beauty in terms of comprehensiveness very beautiful right he has studied many religions all the religions the great religions right so he do not see the greater than the noble evil path in terms of beauty in terms of comprehensiveness right and he father said that I am content to shape my life according to that path he is happy he is content to shape his life in according with the noble evil path so here as you all know that Mr. Rick Davis came from Christian background he studied the world religions as well he is a scholar he said that he do not see any other teachings that is more beautiful than the Noble Eightfold Path more, comprehensi uh, more comprehensive than the Noble Eightfold Path we can understand the importance of the Noble Eightfold Path right? and he said that I am content to shape my life according to the, the path so when you look at the Noble Eightfold Path you can see the right view right? right view or right understanding before you do anything you must have a right understanding right before you come to this class you must understand right who is the teacher and what are the topics how he will teach right before you go to one country you must know right you must understand where you are going right how you will go when you study one subject you must know before you read right what you are you, what you are reading what is purpose of your reading right I think the noble four part start with the right view is very important therefore the Buddha said that in uh, Sanda Nikaya Maka Sanyoda the discourses that are connected with the noble four part right so all the discourses that are connected with the Noble Eightfold Path are combined into one chapter. It is called Magasanyoda. So in Magasanyoda, the first soda of Magasanyoda said that everything starts with the right view. If you have a right view, then all the things, all the good things follow. If you have a wrong view, all the bad things will follow right so therefore it's very important so here the noble four part start with the right view only you have a right view or right understanding your thinking your intention will be right so therefore it is called right intention or right thought only your intention and you are thinking is right your speech your action, your profession, your job will be good. Right? Sila. Only you have a, a good sila, your mind will be concentrated. You have a, a good concentration, a good mindfulness, wholesome mindfulness. Right? Concentration follow. Only you have a strong concentration, and there will be a wisdom right right knowledge so therefore I want to say the, the sequence of the noble full part is very important a very beautiful right a very comprehensive so therefore I think the noble full part is very important for Buddhists not only to attain a bhana, but also to shape our life right so first of all we need to uh, we need to understand, right? We need to have a right view first. Then only all our speeches and all our actions, all our mental state will be go into good direction, right? So therefore, I think that uh, the noble Fuba is very important. 
So the Nobel Info part can be divided into three subcategories. That is the Silas Maripanya, right? Silas Maripanya. Don't forget that uh, Silas Maripanya is another category showing that, uh, how to say, the Sila concentration is higher than and uh, more important than Sila. And Panya or Western is higher than Sila and Samadhi, right? This is the way. But to have a Sila, we need to have a Western, right? We need to have a wisdom or right view. So therefore, so when we talk about when we are talking about the path or the practice, panya or wisdom come first. Then only the sila, our speech, our action, our livelihood, then our mental state will come. So this is a two category, right? We don't we don't we don't need to uh, it's important not to miss uh, two categories, right? In terms of, uh, in terms of uh, the level of uh, quality, sila, samari, panya. But when we practice, panya is important. Panya comes first, right? The wisdom comes first. Any question? No question? Okay. Then if you don't have a question, I have one question. <laughs> question from students. It says the uh, March, long ago, waiting, uh, waiting to uh, this time, to talk about this time. I met someone who always tell me that he believes only himself, nothing else, not even any religion, not even going to temple doesn't believe anything. He believes himself. That means he doesn't believe any religion. He said that it is all in the mind. So long as he has a positive thought and knows how to manage his mind, he sees no necessity for having any religion. Do you agree? <laughs> A very good question. I think that that is very important, right? Before we talk about believing or following a religion, right? We must understand the word religion. So when we talk about religion, wherever dictionary you, you read, you will find that believing in one God or believing in many gods. Right? Many gods. That is uh, the definition of religion. So therefore, we have a, how to say, the different understanding and different interpretation about religion. So therefore, people say that, many scholars say that, Buddhism is not a religion. Buddhism is not a religion because we don't believe any creator god. And also, we don't believe any gods and goddesses that control our destiny. That's important to know, right? In that sense, Buddhism is not, re not a religion, right? Not a religion. But of course, we also have a belief or faith in tribunes that is different from believing in gods and goddesses, right? And we as a Buddhist, as you all know, that we have a 30, 31 planes of existence, right? 31 planes of existence. In the heavenly realms, there are millions and billions of gods and goddesses, right? They also have their own destiny, right? Because of good deed, they have a river there. So there are many beings in the hell and uh, woeful planes as well, right? So they also, uh, they are own all their, their karma. We believe in karma, right? But here, he doesn't believe 
uh, any religion, right? So when we talk about believing in God and goddesses, so that means his idea is the same as a Buddhist, right? The same as a Buddhist. So therefore, I think uh, uh, the Lai Lama is very smart. So when, when he meet with the atheists, who doesn't, who doesn't believe God and God exists? He said that atheists and Buddhists are not different. We are the same. <laughs> because we don't believe the Creator God, right? We believe our own, right? We believe our same. He also, he believes only himself. So that means, as a Buddhist, we believe our same. We are all our our karma. If we do good, and we have a good result. If we do bad, a bad result, right? So up to here, we are the same. And he said that all in the mind, that's all the same, right? In Dhammabra, the first verse and second verse said that uh, mind is forana, right? If I do good, and good things will follow. Just like uh, the foot of a cow, right? An ox that follow the, how do you say? The we follow the foot of a cow, right? Cow. But if I do bad, the bad things will follow me, right? Just like my shadow, just like my shadow. And he said that it is all in the mind. So long as he has a positive thought and know how to manage his mind, he see no necessity for having any religion. No need, right? <laughs> no need any religion. If you have a positive thought, if you can manage your mind, you don't need to come to temple. You don't need to attend the classes, right? Actually, the Buddha said that mind is very important, right? So here, we saw in America the path of purity. So that means the purity means you don't have any negative mental state, right? Your mind is pure. But uh, going to temple, we have to think in this way that um, it is easy to manage our mind to have a positive thinking all the time not really easy, right? Can you meditate at all? <laughs> Why you come and do meditation here? You can sit you are, you are at all, right? You don't need to come to temple. But our mind is a monkey mind. If we sit at all, you cannot control your mind. For that reason, many people come to temple they make a lot of effort, they spend a lot of money to come to temple, and they do meditation together with other people. The reason is, not easy to meditate at home, even though your room is very quiet. You still have to come to temple, and you meditate with other people. The reason is, we cannot control to have a positive thought. For that reason, we come to temple, right? That's very important, very important. Of course, if you can train your mind not to have any negative mental state, you don't need to believe anything, right? You don't need to believe anything because you're pure mind, right? You come to temple, you are attending puja, attending the classes. The reason is we are training our mind, right? to have a positive mental state. So I think the question is very beautiful, but I am doubt that uh, the, uh, the person, what, uh, what, what they said, whether he has a real positive mental state or not, right? It is very important. So we believe in Buddhism. Actually, it is totally different from other belief systems. We believe our say we are own our own karma right 
because uh, we believe the teachings of the Buddha because it is correct, right? It is right. For that reason, uh, we believe in the Buddha. And we believe uh, the Riya Sangha, right? Riya Sangha. Totally different from other religions. So here, what I, do, what I want to point out here is the, so there are a lot of atheists in the world, even Singapore alone, we have 80% of atheists. 80%, one eight, right? It's a lot of people do not believe religion, right? Religion. Normally, I very often said that as a Buddhist, we are atheists. We don't believe in Creator God. We don't believe the cause that God and Goddesses who control our destiny, right? We believe ourselves. We are doing dana. Uh, the result of dana will come to us, right? If we practice sila samari panya, it is connected with us. Other than that, no need, right? No need. But if you look at uh, in Southeast Lebanon, by looking at this way, you don't need to, uh, you might think that it is waste all the time to come to Tambe. It is waste all the time to come to places, right? But if you can control your mind. But actually, we cannot control our mind. We cannot control our mind. For that reason, we still need to come to Tambe, right? We need a very good environment to have a positive mental state, right? Positive mental state. As you all know that um, if you are walking in your office, a lot of anger, a lot of greed, a lot of jealousy, but if you can do tempe, less anger, <laughs> less greed, right? Less jealousy. A good environment, right? A good environment very important. If you come to Chukwinyu Hall, and if you go to Shrine Hall, totally different. The Shrine Hall and Chukwinyu Hall, different. Because we have been doing a lot of puja in Shrine Hall. Shrine Hall is blessed, right? Chukwinyu Hall and Mangala Hall, totally different. Because we have been using Chukwinyu Hall for teaching, right? But here, a lot of energy here, a lot of energy. You can experience when you come to Chukwinyu Hall. Then you, you, just, you just try, when there is no class, but come and visit Chukwinyu Hall. <laughs> a lot of energy, right? A lot of energy, a lot of you know, powerful spirit in Chukwinyu Hall. So therefore, I think it's very important to have a very good environment, right? Very good environment. So we come to Tambe, uh, we are attending the causes. The reason is we are training our mind, right? We are using our Tambe, uh, we are using our class to train our mind to be better person, right? To be better mind. So therefore, I want to encourage you all to come and visit, to come to come to Tampa, right? To get to Tampa. Okay. Then uh, a few years back, one of the devotee came to Tampa and talked to me that she has a lot of problem. <coughs> How she should do? Then I told her to attend the puja, to attend the causes, come to Tambe regularly. Then after a while, she became very happy. She became very happy. Because we are training our mind by coming to Tambe, right? Because this is a good place, a good environment. So if you're coming very often, the more you come, the more your mind 
can do it better. For that reason, I always encourage come to Tambe, attend puja, attend the courses. By attending the puja and courses, you will have a negative, positive mental state in your mind, in your brain, right? In your brain. So therefore, it's important to come to Tambe. Right? At least you don't have negative mental state, right? Less negative mental state. But they, the positive thoughts is actually not equal to right view, right? Sorry? Positive thoughts uh, for a lay people might not be equal to right view. So it's like this person, as long as he has positive thoughts, uh, he might not be having right view. Just like a very positive person uh, might not have very right, might not have the right view. Just like when you say compassion, you you cannot feel the sadness, but you 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 can give whatever but you don't share the kind of sadness when you cannot fulfill so a positive thought or a very positive uh, 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 optimistic person does not equal to having right view and in buddhism right view is very important that's why over here maybe the positive thoughts does not equal to right view because prior to coming to this temple i am a optimistic person but i don't have the right view as of buddhism so i think here positive thoughts is not equal to right view? I don't know exactly because <laughs> I'm not that positive. <laughs> but here, the positive thought here, according to Buddhism, is the uh, number one, renunciation. Right? When you meet a difficult person, you have to let go. When you hear a very disturbing sound, it's important to let go, not to attach that to disturbing sound, right? So number one is a renunciation or letting go. Number two, loving kindness. Number three, compassion. So these three are called right thought or positive thought according to Buddhism. But I think that for now we, uh, we are not learning in detail, but when we learn the Nobel for part, we will explain in detail. So when we talk about loving kindness, when you talk about compassion, as she said that, for this compassion is very pure. So when you see a needy person, you're trying to help them. So when your contribution is not enough for that needy person, you don't have sadness or sorrow or pity in your mind. Your mind stays pure. And you just understand that, uh, all the beings are on all their karma. You're trying to fulfill uh, the needy person. If your contribution is not enough, trying to understand, control your mind. All the beings are on all their karma. I'm trying my best. That's all. That's compassion, right? That's compassion. So that is called positive thought, right? Positive thought. Later we will learn in detail, later we will learn in detail, right? But here, so the thing is, uh, Buddhism is not a religion. If we follow uh, interpretation or dictionary, right? Buddhism is a, a way of practice or the path that leads to purity. Purity means the purity of the mind, right? the purity of the mind. A very simple one, if you can follow teachings of the Bora, you don't need to come to temple. You don't need to attend the courses, right? But we cannot do that. For that reason, we need a good environment and we need a good place to have a positive positive mental state. Right? Therefore, we are coming to Tampa. So when I, uh, when I was living in Yango, uh, I was attending English courses. But sometimes I visit uh, Shredegong Pagoda. Not sometimes, very often. The reason is I use a good environment to clear my mind. Right? By visiting, by going to Shredegong Pagoda, then I can have a peace of mind. 
even though people have a uh, problem and difficulties, but when they come to Shirakum Pagoda, their mind becomes serene and they have a peaceful mind. So that peace and serenity come to our mind, right? For that reason, we need to go in good place, a good place. And then uh, uh, we are very lucky that we have a good place in Singapore, right? Because our temple is very spacious, right? A lot of places uh, to stay very calmly, right? If you go to uh, Shrine Hall, no disturbance. And you can go to top floor, right? If there's no classes, come to Chukin Hall, right? Yeah. It's a good environment, good environment. Any question? So I think um, I want to share. We will stay up for five minutes. Uh, no time to go to next topic. I want to share one of the story, not the story, um, the actual life story of a Singaporean, a young lady. And I read uh, last year. I read last year or two years ago. I read uh, um, uh, Straight Times. It said that it talk about many people, many young people are shunning or staying away from religion. And he, uh, the straight time, uh, talk about different story of um, the young people who are from different religions, right? So when it talk about Buddhism and giving a one young lady, uh, at that time she is just 23. And she said that uh, she came from Buddhist background. And she, when she was 30 years, one three, right, one three, she converted to Christianity. The reason is that she cannot, uh, she cannot find a value uh, in the rice and religion. So as you all know that as a Chinese, a lot of rice and religion, right? going to Kuan Yin and how to say the planning the job state, a lot of things, right? And I say a young lady, Tati, right, one three, she said that the rice and rage that she is following is meaningless. So therefore she converted to Christianity. After three years in Christianity, she became atheist because she believed that there's no God. There's no proof that there's no God. And she can stay without any religion. For that reason, she became atheist, right? So here, when we learn about Sila, there's no rights and wages, right? Just to control your bodily actions, and variations. There's no rise and ray trace. But when we talk about concentration, you're trying to concentrate your mind, you're trying to have serenity of the mind, there's no rise and ray trace. But wisdom, insight, trying to understand right and wrong, and trying to understand the nature of mind and body, the nature of impermanence. There's no rise and rage, right? No rise and rage. <laughs> Why? Actually, as the Buddhists, we do not understand teachings of the Buddha. We, we spend our time, we spend our time following rise and rage, right? Following rise and rage. So I think after seeing, after reading that article, I feel pity on her. Because she doesn't understand. As you all know that 30 years, stay very young. And I believe that. Because of her, maybe her friends, and she converted to other religions. But she became atheist at the age of 16. So anyway, 
I always said that uh, the Buddha is an atheist because he doesn't believe any God, right? He doesn't believe the God create the war. God create our control our destiny, right? I'm atheist. <laughs> I was it <laughs> because I I don't believe that there is creator God, right? I don't believe. So therefore, when we talk about uh, the Buddhist cosmology, the Buddhist cosmology is very close to scientific findings. So we believe that things happen according to their nature. And things were destroyed because of the nature. Fire, water, air, right? We don't talk about the creator God or the one who maintained the wall or who destroyed. We are not talking, right? The wall were formed in their nature and the wall were destroyed with the by the nature. I think it's very quite clear, very close to uh, very close to um, uh, scientific findings, right? Scientific findings. So when uh, when we heard, when I heard uh, about the man, uh, man, our our ancestors are ape, right? <laughs> apes, apes. I'm not worried about that, right? I'm not worried about whether it is truth or false. It doesn't matter. The main tenets or the main contents of Buddhist teaching is sila, samadhi, panya. Nothing to do with those. Whether it is uh, we come from the apes, animal, or we come from the Brahma realm, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. As a Buddhist, we are free. So therefore, I, I always think that I'm a free thinker, or I am mm, atheist, right? Atheist. I don't believe any creator God. That's very important, I think. Uh, when people said uh, they don't believe any religion, right? We can say that Buddhism is not a religion. It is a way of life. It is the path that leads to the purity of the mind, right? As far as, uh, as long as your mind is pure, then you are a good person, right? You are a good person. I think that's a very important one. So, when I heard uh, those stories, and I pity on them, they don't understand the teachings of the Buddha, right? The teachings of the Buddha uh, is nothing to do with rights and virtues. It's something to do with our contact, right? And our mental state, and our wisdom. That is teachings of the Buddha, right? So when I teach, um, uh, when I, uh, in later part, I will come in detail, right? Regarding with the rights and virtues how we see the rights and virtues, right? Uh, how we consider those rights and virtues. We'll come to that. I will explain in detail, right? Question? No question, right? Okay, let's finish our lessons. Yo Ah, 
Good night, everyone.